Fascism is a political philosophy, ideology and form of government based on values of authoritarian and ultra-nationalism. Fascist regimes use lies as a weapon and create a fake world of dreams and fancies. Few years ago, renowned political scientist Dr. Lawrence Brett wrote an article about fascism. He carefully studied the fascist regimes like Hitler's Nazi Germany, Mussolini's fascist Italy, Franco's Spain, Salazar's Portugal, Papadopoulos' era in Greek, Pinochet's Chile, and Suharto's Indonesia. Dr. Lawrence Brett found out that they all have same modus operandi and constitute a mixed bag of national identities, cultures, development levels, and history. So he disclosed that analysis of these seven regimes reveals 14 common threads that link them in recognizable patterns of national behavior and abuse of power. These 14 characters or similarities are used as a barometer or litmus test to figure out whether a specific regime is following footprints of fascism or not. So today we would be trying to understand these 14 basic characteristics of fascist regimes. I am Bilal Hori and you are watching Trazu. The first footmark of fascism is powerful and continuing expressions of nationalism. Fascist regimes tend to make constant use of patriotic mottos, slogans, symbols, songs and other things. Flags are seen everywhere. Catchy slogans, pride in the military and demand for unity are common themes in expressing this nationalism. Each and every bitter pill is coated in national interest. So ultimately the regime itself and all citizens are caught up in this frenzy. Fear is the most lethal weapon of fascist regimes. Because of fear of enemies and the need for security, the people in fascist regimes are persuaded and convinced that human rights can be ignored in certain cases due to national security. The people tend to look the other way or even approve of torture, summary executions, assassinations, long detention of prisoners and other brutal and vicious things. Enemies of the state, traitors and foreign agents, these are the most popular terms in fascist governments. The people are rallied into a unifying patriotic frenzy over the need to eliminate a perceived common threat or foe racial, ethnic or religious minorities, liberals, communists, socialists and terrorists. The decision makers are of the view that if we can eliminate few thousand people, there would be peace. Then all of a sudden they realize that eternal peace is only in grave. Even when there are wide separate financial shortcomings and domestic problems, the military is given a hefty amount of government funding Development sector, health and education agenda is neglected. Soldiers and military services are glamorized. You know, I'm not an ordinary doctor. I'm doctor in uniform. When you bloody civilians sleep, we are guarding geographical boundaries of the country. Such narrative is built to establish superiority of armed forces. Masculinity is the main feature of the fascist regimes who tend to be almost exclusively male dominated. Under fascist regimes, traditional gender roles are made more rigid, women's rights are snatched under cover of fake values and virtues, opposition to love marriage, divorce and abortion is high, as is the homophobia and anti-gay legislation and national policy. You may have listened former military dictator Idi Amin Dada who once said, there is freedom of speech but I can't guarantee freedom after speech. So fascist regimes claim freedom of expression, but this is only an eyewash. Media is directly or in other cases indirectly controlled by government regulations or pro-government media spokespeople and censorship, especially in wartime it is very common. You would often listen these bizarre statements, the country is in danger, 
we would defend national security, integrity and national interest till our last breath. Actually in fascist regimes, fear is used as a motivational tool by a government over the masses. Religious bigotry and intolerance are integral part of fascist regime. Rulers and religious fanatics are like nail and flesh. Government in fascist regimes tend to use the most common religion in the nation as a tool to manipulate public opinion. Religious rhetoric and terminologies are commonly used from government leaders. For example, they would say, we want to establish Rayasate Medina. The industrial and business aristocracy of a fascist regime often are the ones who put the government leaders into power, creating mutually beneficial business, government relationships and power elite. First they invest on leaders in making and then they receive all their investment with interest. Because the organizing power of labor and students are the only real threat to a fascist government, hence labor unions and student unions are either eliminated entirely or they are severely suppressed and controlled through their puppets. Fascist nations tend to promote and tolerate open hostility to higher education and academia. It is not uncommon for professors and other academics to be censored or even arrested. Free expression in the arts is openly attacked. The government often refuses to fund the arts. They hate intellectuals and try to eliminate them. Under fascist regime, the police are given almost limitless power to enforce laws. The people are often willing to overlook police abuses and even forego civil liberties in the name of patriotism. There is often a national police force with virtually unlimited power in fascist nations. Fascist regimes almost always are governed by a group of friends and associates who appoint each other through government positions and use government power and authority to protect their friends from accountability. It is not uncommon in fascist regimes for national resources and even treasures to be appropriated or even outright stolen by government leaders. On one hand, they are looting and plundering money while on the other hand, they are champions of accountability. Sometimes elections in the fascist nations are a complete shame. Other times elections are manipulated by smear campaigns against or even assassination of opposition candidates. Use of legislation to control voting number of political district boundaries and manipulation of the media. Fascist nations also typically use their judiciaries to manipulate or control elections. So don't confuse with the labels. You may have so-called parliamentary democratic system, presidential system or any other form of government. But if you find these 14 symptoms in your society, it means you are living in a fascist regime. Thanks for your time. If you want to stay in touch, subscribe our channel and turn on bell icon.